So thank you for giving us this great chance, and thank you for joining us with this great session. And this session is divided into two parts. First one is by Oliver Sasset, director at SCM from England. And second part is me, DB Pros from Japan, and students from Sapporo International University. So please welcome Oliver Sasset. Thank you. Cheers, Hiroiki. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Hello. How is everybody doing? We're on the uh, homeward straight now, right? You just have a few more hours left, and, and then we can all relax again. I'm looking forward to that part. Um, my name's Oliver. That's really what my mum calls me. Ollie is what most other people call me. Um, you can call me pretty much anything you like. I've heard it all by now. Um, I'm director at ACM. We're a music industry educator, moving to be what is really a creative industries educator. Uh, ACM is a microcosm of the music and wider creative industries, uh, where our students represent every corner of an industry that one day they want to work in. Performers, producers, songwriters, artists, technical services personnel, business people, games developers, all there under one roof, doing real things by learning together, doing real things by working together. And the people who teach them, they come with all the qualifications you would expect an FE or HE lecturer to have. But more than that, in our opinion, they're connected to an industry that one day our students want to work in. And for as long as they're not teaching in the classrooms, they're out there in the working world uh, creating new sounds, dreaming up new ways of working, and then bringing all of those people, those contacts that they're making, those opportunities, back into the classrooms for ACM students. Um, the students, they learn from environments that we're really proud of. Um, we work with a range of manufacturers and in industry from Apple all the way through to Zildjian to give our students a range and diversity in learning equipment and facilities that represents what they'll experience in the working world. Um, and we see our job as really to prepare them for a lifetime in which their earning potential is probably not going to be made up of one employment, but of multiple employed and self-employed opportunities. We're preparing them for a career where actually it probably won't be built in a linear fashion, where maybe a bit like a lawyer or a dentist or a doctor, save for some unfortunate circumstance, more time and more study does not equal a bigger salary and a bigger house and a faster car and so on and so forth. A career in the creative industries is not built like that. A career in the creative industries is built like this and no matter how high the highs are, you know, there are gonna be some low points too. So our job is not to prepare our students just academically for what is going on, but actually professionally and personally too. Our pledge is to do whatever we need to do to bridge that gap between where they are and where they one day want to be, earning a living, doing something that they love. Now, over the last few years, this kind of compelling nature, this thing that has been going on there, has caused a big increase in the number of students that we're teaching. Our student body has tripled in the last four years. Um, and actually, right now, we have um, around 2,200 uh, students studying across the UK, studying a range of subjects. I mentioned them earlier. Now, ACM, our original name was the Academy of Contemporary Music, but just as the world around us has changed. We have needed to change. The Academy of Contemporary Music is just now ACM. It's where we were. Where we're going is all about not just music, but the creative industries. And today, what I'd like to talk to you guys about is how we believe technology plays such an important part in that whole area and in that space. Um, I'm a long time advocate and, and customer of um, the FileMaker platform myself. Um, We've used FileMaker at ACM to do a bunch of things. Um, we are there using FileMaker to manage the journey of students 
through the organisation to make sure that their lives academically, personally, professionally are fulfilled. Um, Farmaker is helping us become a happier, healthier organisation. It's helping them live happier, healthier lives. Um, here's a little taster of kind of what goes on at ACM every day and what our environment looks like. video you'll have probably not seen one person using FileMaker. I'm going to talk to you a bit about that in just a second. Um, so FileMaker, FileMaker actually touches every aspect of our organisation from start to finish, from that first point of contact with the student all the way through to graduation as they move up and out into the world of work. And we deal with all of our applications, um, all of our offer making and enrolment, enrolments through the platform. Um, we deal with our timetabling and our attendance, our academic management. Um, we're seeing that our students are happier as a result, our staff are happier. And now we're being asked by the UK government to share our product with the wider sector. Um, they want to learn why this particular solution is working where others, and arguably others that cost and have costed an awful lot more money than this one, have not. Um, now, there's a bunch of stuff online about that. But today, while I'm here, and with some other people here today, uh, I'm here to talk about how FileMaker can be used and is being used to inspire the next generation of developer. Um, so think back to that video, and you had all of those music students there, creatives. And earlier I was in a, an amazing talk by Jess, who sat there at the middle, and she was saying that actually you know, if you're a FileMaker developer, you're a creative too. And that's something that I felt for an awfully long time. It's easy to not see beyond the technical competency. It's easy to just consider a developer as someone who is sat there coding. But we know, we all know if we've done this job, that's only actually part of the job. The rest of it, 
is about creativity, creativity and problem solving and all of the rest of it. Um, this session today is talking about appetite for development. You know, where did it come from? Where does it come from? How are we going to find the next generation of developer? Who are they? How do they behave? What do they look like? Where do we find them today? Um, we're going to talk about what happens when you give the next generation developer a copy of FileMaker. And I'll tell you about a really cool project that we've been working on at ACM, not just with our core student group of 18 plus, but actually with a group of students as young as 12. Um, and we're also going to look into what's happening with FileMaker elsewhere in the world as we aim to really get this product into the hands of more people sooner. So let's talk about developer appetite. You know, where did it all start? Well, for me, I was a bit of a geek. Hands up if you were a geek as a child. OK, great. So I had a very nerdy childhood. Um, I loved my little Dymo labor, label embosser, um, making things with that. Um, I loved like anything that was to do with like a checkout. Um, you know, it wasn't so much the act of shopping that I was interested in, but the thought of maybe this thing one day will make a receipt and maybe that receipt will have some data on it. Pretty geeky, huh? Um, I would like talk to my watch and um, I would pretend that it would say things back. Obviously, a lot has changed since. And now when I talk to my watch and it, and it does say things back, people aren't quite as surprised as they once were. Now, what I'd like to talk to you about is developer appetite today. Developer appetite today, I think, has changed. It doesn't come from necessarily that same place, although seeing QuakeCon here, um, you know, maybe, maybe offers an alternative view on that. Developer appetite today begins from a place where actually Technology is ubiquitous. Technology is everywhere. And that has caused a shift in the way that people are getting into FileMaker. That has caused a shift in the way that people are getting into development. The fact that technology is so ubiquitous, it's so the norm, I don't think that developer appetite is the preserve of geeks anymore. Developer appetite like is, is all around us. It starts when your two or three year old goes up and smacks the television in the living room and wonders why the channel isn't swiping. How many people here have experienced that? I mean, it's quite funny when it happens. Developer appetite is when kids start to use apps and their aspirations for that app are actually above and beyond the current functionality of that app. You no longer, like me, have to make a computer out of a cardboard box and sit there in the tent in the back of the, in the, back of the garden, just like pretending and wishing that it was real. I mean, technology, the fact it is with us always from day dot means that actually developer appetite isn't just for those kinds of kids anymore. But we do have a bit of a problem here because developer appetite also comes from creativity. The want to change something, the want to make a difference. And I've long believed, and a lot of us have long believed, that the answer to developer appetite lives in that act of creativity and problem solving. And largely, you know, the, the biggest satisfaction that I get from using FileMaker is not sat there at my computer coding, but actually getting out there and making a difference, hearing somebody's story, understanding their problem, designing a solution, and seeing what happens when that solution can make a difference to the environment and to the people you introduce it to. And I think it's been really cool as part of this year's DevCon to suddenly have some messaging around this now. FileMaker as a platform is not just giving us a technology tool to work with, but also a language toolkit that we can use to harmonize the way in which we talk about FileMaker to other people. So they're calling it the problem solvers, problem solver. And I think that that was pretty cool. 
The issue we have is that education is killing creativity. And I say this from a UK standpoint. I don't know how it is in other places in the world, and I'd be keen to find out if there is anyone here that wants to talk about that afterwards. I'd love to. In the UK, they have taken money away from all kinds of arts education. They are putting more and more focus on technical competency. The coding curriculum, it's all about, can you do this? Can you do that? Do you understand maths? Can you do a sum? Are you good at your science subjects? What are your competencies in, la in language? Where's the dreaming? Where's the imagination? And I think that we have a responsibility as a community to think about this. Because if anyone has tried to recruit a developer from a purely traditional technical background in the past, you might have encountered a common problem. How do you get that person to go to a client, hold a conversation, understand a problem, design a solution? Yeah, they might get the code, but that's only a part of the job. Hands up if anyone here has had a problem recruiting developers in the past. It's really difficult. Those soft skills, and again, you know, this is something that came up in Jess's talk earlier. Those soft skills, as they are called, are really hard to acquire. And in my view, they shouldn't be called a soft skill. They're absolutely integral to every single thing that we do as a filmmaker developer. Because any industry is first and foremost a people industry. DevCon is a prime example of this. If you as a community can come together and can connect, you can solve problems. You can get over your technical competency. The beauty of this platform, no code, low code, pro code, it grows with you. FileMaker is now a platform that can grow with you as a developer. It doesn't matter if your competency isn't where you want it to be yet. It's your aspiration that is important. And if your aspiration is right, it should always be going for what comes next. You know, ideally, your aspirations for your technical development should always be kind of keeping step and maintaining distance with your actual abilities in those areas. But in order to have the aspirations in the first place, you have to be able to have the creativity. You have to be able to think. And I think that we have a real problem with this now. I want to talk to you guys about Generation Z, our newest generation of filmmaker developer. These guys, they're our teens and our tweens. They are the youth. They are the up ages, the screen ages. They are the people who are out there aspiring to rent instead of to buy. They are the people who are living at home for longer. They are the people that want to make the world a better place. There's a statistic that 72% of Generation Z want to get out there and change the world. They struggle. They struggle because of technology and they're helped by technology. They struggle because of technology because they live their life in front of a social media world where opinion is loud and everywhere. I'm glad I didn't grow up with that pressure. Imagine, you know, not just being judged when you are in a situation, but actually when you're away from that situation as well. They struggle to make contact with people. Um, Everything that's going on in the education landscape with regards to creativity, you know, that isn't helping that. That's pushing it the other way. You know, it's, well, prove yourself. What can you do? Show me what you can do. Can you do this sum? Can you do that? You know, that's not where we want to be. Touted Ignore that. I've had braces fitted usually, uh, recently, and it's made getting words out a little more difficult than usual. So I had a little video in case I was having problems today, but it's fine. Um, Generation Z, earning a living from doing multiple things at multiple times. We all probably understand that. It's the way the world is going, the gig economy. But 
it is unusual to everyone. And so what I want us to think about is how we, as a generation that has had other benefits, other issues, what can we do to kind of ease the journey of Generation Z into the FileMaker platform? Well, we're already helped quite a lot with this. We're already helped with the fact that the platform gives us no roadblocks, no code, low code, pro code. It's possible to go from zero to 60 with FileMaker. You can take a potentially interested individual and give them the software and a load of resources that already exist, and you can see what happens. It grows with the development community. You know, that Goldilocks fit that we heard about in the keynote, that's not only reserved for our clients. You know, we say for our clients, well, we can make a, a solution that is perfect just for you, but actually FileMaker can be perfect just for the developer as well. And you can view this thing from all different angles. You don't have to have a developer, a young developer, feel like they are kind of burdened with that word. You know, developer as a word for a, a potentially interested young person who is creative and wants to change the world around them and wants to make things, that's quite a burdensome word to put upon them. Oh yeah, so you're a developer. Am I? You know, I thought, thought I was just 12 wanting to build this really cool thing. We don't have to burden them with that with FileMaker. So what we've been doing, knowing all of this, is really working hard at ACM to get FileMaker into the hands of more and more young people. Um, we have a Saturday school. Uh, it runs every Saturday of the year um, for kids aged 12 and up. Guitarists, bass players, vocalists, songwriters, producers. And what we did was we went to those guys and we talked to them about their life, their world. What did they want to do? Most of them, again, wanted to do something pretty special. I remember, like, I wanted to be, like, a songwriter for Jason Donovan when, when like, I was a kid. Um, these, these guys, they wanted to do something, like, far more worthy than that. They wanted to build tools to make their lives better. They wanted to make music for, you know, not for this idea of fame and fortune. I was probably obsessed with that. Um, they wanted to make music for themselves. They wanted to make music for their family. They wanted to just do their bit to make their world a little bit better. Um, we taught them how to use FileMaker, kids as young as 12. Um, we taught them how to problem solve. We taught them how to come up with an idea. And it was weird for them because in school they were telling us they, they didn't have this. You know, even like 12, that isn't, that isn't so old. Their time was consumed with structured activity, homework, this exercise, that, that exercise, not free thought. And I think we're seeing the impact of this in the workplace. How many people have heard of mindfulness as a tool? So more and more people um, in, the, in my workplace and other workplace places in life are using mindfulness as a tool to allow the mind to wander. And for me, that's a really worrying sign. You know, the, the idea of mindfulness is that, that it helps you find a space where um, you can be good, you can feel good, you can create. But we shouldn't really be in a place where we have to use a tool proactively to find that sense of, of calm and an assurance about letting the mind wander and imagining things. And if we've got this problem even in a creative arts institution, I'd hate to think what other institutions look like and how other kids are feeling. And we saw this really weird split in the things that our kids were making. The younger kids, they were making things that like, I'd never even thought about using, making file, in FileMaker. The older kids, they were very much conforming to what um, you know, the company is now calling the workplace innovation platform. But there was a defined split. So 
one guy that I got to work with, he made this Makaton sign language app. He had a younger sister, she was five. Her speech hadn't come through yet. Um, and her family were, were kind of living with that every single day. And he made this app that allowed him and his sister to communicate with each other and to learn new things about Makaton so they could communicate even more with each other. Um, there, was, there was another kid in class um, who made a football sticker trading app, which I thought was incredibly enterprising. And it was all based on the idea that, um, you know, these things that he'd been collecting were valuable. And, um, and <laughs> yeah, I think that's your next Richard Branson or somebody like that. Um, there was a friendship group messaging app that was a lot like WhatsApp or Facebook. There was a comic book catalogue, you know, things that you'd expect kids to make, a memory box, that was a really sweet one. Then we moved on to the older kids. Now, they were using the FileMaker platform, like I said, for, for more traditional things. They were using it for collaboration, for homework. They were using it for self-improvement. They were keeping practice diaries and that kind of thing, and um, using FileMaker Go um, to uh, allow them to record um, audio and video and watch things back and improve and make comments. Um, much more conforming to traditionally what you'd expect FileMaker to be used for. What we noticed, though, were that the kids who were making those first lot of apps, the memory boxes, the, the messaging channels, the Makaton app, they knew that tools like this already existed. They knew they could go and, you know, with their mum's iPad or dad's iPhone or iPod Touch that they might have had, they knew that they could go and get similar things. But there was something really magical to them about being able to do it themselves. I heard Jess's other half, Jordan, um, talk earlier at, at DevCon as well, and he had a similar experience. Um, they went to UTC Reading, which is an FE further education college um, just south of London. And uh, they actually took some kids through how you could recreate Facebook uh, using FileMaker. And it was the same thing. It was the opening the mind to possibility. Oh, you mean I could do this? I could do this if I wanted? That's pretty cool. The other thing that we noticed was that they had aspirations way above their competencies by the time that we finished. Um, they wanted to do more and more, and actually this led to a really cute story. Um, so one girl in class ended up building an app called Dad's Home. And um, every day, she and, and her siblings would um, go upstairs and wait for Dad to come home. And she had this idea for a long time in class, and um, she, couldn't, she wasn't quite there with her coding yet, put it that way, um, to achieve it. Um, but since, she has achieved it with the help of the community, which is really cool, another cool thing about FileMaker. Um, she actually created a Zap. If anyone has used Zapier as a platform to integrate with FileMaker, it, you'll know it's pretty cool. If you haven't, check it out. She created a Zap that connected FileMaker with their Philips Hue lights at home so that she could launch her app and they would take it in turns to wait for dad to come home and they'd hit the dad's home button and all of the lights at home would flash. How cute is that? Now, that's what happens when you get FileMaker into the hands of younger people. Now, what, where we've gone from that is that we went to FileMaker and we told them about this. And we said, look, we want to get the technology into the hands of more and more young people. And they said, OK, we're going to give you some free licenses. Right, we have a start. Because when you look at other technology platforms um, from the likes of Adobe, Autodesk, you know, they make these kinds of tools available free within an educational context. So now what we're going to do is come back and we're going to rerun this exercise. We're going to rerun it with a bigger group this time. We'll welcome some of our familiar faces back, but we'll also invite some more people into the group. Um, we're going to be working more closely with FileMaker. Um, to ensure that we get the best of um, the, the company's knowledge behind what we're doing. Um, we're going to be documenting that journey 
um, in, a, in an AV way. So it will be video documented and available for you guys to, to keep kind of track of. Um, but what we're really looking for now are people to get involved. We're looking for people who have got time, um, whether that's in person, if you're close to London, um, or online, if you're a little further away. And we're looking for people who can help inspire that next generation of FileMaker developer. And the reason that we're doing this, by the way, if you would like to get involved, then please let me know. Um, my Twitter account is just there. The reason that we're doing this is because we're already seeing the good stuff. We're already seeing what is happening when FileMaker gets into the hands of younger people. The recent stories that we've been seeing coming out of 42U in the States are one example. Um, this is really throwing out the old model of education, structured learning. 42U um, is where students come to a place of learning where all of the resources that they need are there, computers and software, just to get on with it. And there, those kids have been learning about FileMaker. And those kids are now out in the FileMaker developer community. They're joining FBAs. They're starting their own consultancies. Now, that's great. What we want to do is the step before. So we're saying, look, let's not wait until they are 16 to 18 before getting them this software. Let's start at 12. Let's get more dad's home apps. Let's get more Makaton sign language apps on the go. Let's really see what happens before workplace innovation. Let's see how FileMaker can be used to make their world a better place. Um, now, we're not the only project that has been kind of ongoing with FileMaker to that regard. Um, as well as 42U, uh, there's another really awesome project in the works. Um, and now I'd like to hand over to my colleague Hiroyuki, and there at the front, who is going to tell us a little bit more about what FileMaker is doing with students in Japan. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Oli. Next 20 minutes is my session. My name is Hiroyuki Aruga, Japanese developer by FBA. I have used FileMaker since version 2.1. Now, I am also a part-time teacher at few universities and high school for teaching database with FileMaker. May I ask a question? Where are, are there any and teacher or uh, getting a job in education or something like that? Okay, sure. This year, my 15th attendance to DEF CON and the second time as speaker. My favorite is tap dance. Whenever attending the DEF CON, um, I always visit tap dance studio. And this time I went to uh, Broadway in New York. Our part of the session, I will introduce these points. What is FileMaker Campus Program? Original app work in students' device. How do students use FileMaker as a STEM tool? Before and after they are using the FileMaker platform. At first, I introduce FileMaker Campus Program it is a special program for authorized schools or organizations. In this program, those schools can use FileMaker platform for learning database. This is great opportunities for students who do not FileMaker ever. In Hokkaido, two universities and one high school join this program. The green area is Hokkaido where it's a very snowy place. I heard people say Vermont in the US looks like that. And these are locations where two universities and one high school exist. FileMaker campus program in Japan, it started in 2013 at Chitose Science and Technology Universities by the late Professor Mitani. The course title is Information Design. We use FileMaker 
as main tools for learning database. For this course, we changed the software to use from very popular database to FileMaker. And we changed main, main platform from desktop PC to mobile, PC, mobile device. And we changed learning style from coding first to design first. Before taking this course, most students didn't have database knowledge. They only used Office application for their studies. After making a small app by themselves with FileMaker through this program, their idea about apps completely changed. The curriculum is not for learning FileMaker platform directly, but learning database, information, information architecture, design for information or interface. FileMaker is used as a main tool for understanding those subjects. We know this platform is very powerful, not only for when they are student, but also when they graduate and join the workforce. The point is to make them understand this platform is very useful for their career. Now I show you how we have using FileMaker in our course. Please remember, most of university courses have just 15 classes for each semester. All we can use is only 15 classes and one class per a week. The gathering students are not developers, and they do not know so much about database yet. Moreover, they didn't see FileMaker before. So I focus on the following points during the class. These are interest, impression, and motivation. The main target platform is their smartphones, because students are always playing with smartphones. So they know a lot about smartphones itself and various apps. First point is interest. For younger generations, their smartphones are very, very friendly devices in their campus life. They can always check their devices whenever they want. But they didn't have any experience that their own app, their made app, works in their phones. Showing their own app works in their smartphones is a very, very significant process for making them recognize that this platform is very useful. So we make a FileMaker file on desktop first and set a very, very simple action with a few layouts. Very simple actions like layout change. Showing startup screen and pause a few seconds and, and then change to another layout. Most students can do this, no problem, because it's very simple. After that, transfer this file to the iPhone and tap it. This is the greatest point for students. This is the very first situation they can see their own app work in their iPhones. Even if they see same action in their desktop file maker, they are so surprised but this time it works on their friendly device. This is great. Impression. I focus on keeping them and get impression from what they have done. This period is a very good timing for learning way of thinking. Considering a general education, not a FileMaker training class, it is important for us not to show shortcut path to the goal. Learning how to is significant at this stage. Experienced FileMaker developers knows everything from easy development style to very complicated but sophisticated way. 
This is the point experienced FBA joined this program as a teacher. We can show the suitable way to the students. In my course, the target is a sm smartphone. A smartphone app has very small screen. Simple action or minimum action are required. So it's enough for students to learn FileMaker goals features only. Motivation. After seeing this simple action app work on their smartphones, a lot of students want to make another. This is a time for new generation as born. Very important practice at this stage is think of the design. What is important? Or what is not important for the people who use this app? FileMaker is a very good tool for making layer design, even if they do not know FileMaker deeply. Students can make layers like mock designs, and they can imagine easily how those screens are shown on their devices. Now, they recognize what, the, what is needed for their apps. So we drew related layouts using Storyboard. Using Storyboard, students can clarify an information navigation, appropriate data structures, lack of action, or functions. They consider, it should be, or it's much better than blah, blah, blah. In this stage, they can see the goal of their app clearly. This approach is very useful for various cases. If students found any problem that they faced at, they could imagine they call clearly. They could move forward by themselves with using layer design. Sometimes they solved the problem easily, sometimes they could find only small parts of the solution. In the class, I show this platform as an information design tool or a STEM tool. Sometimes they could use as a word processor. Sometimes they could use as spreadsheets. Sometimes they could use as pure database software. But the information is not dividable or separatable. FileMaker could combine each information to show as one package in their device. At the final class of the, of the, cl of the course, they show their work with demo. Those are products. After they are taking regular 15 classes, these are able to solve their problem. Some students started a club for learning or using FileMaker to solve various difficulties around their life after finishing the course. They use more complicated structures and functions. So next is the real world report by student and future developer from Japanese university. She planned to talk how they met FileMaker and how it changed their life. Very, very interesting story. Please welcome Ayaka Kato, the youngest presenter at the DEF CON ever. Switch. Hello, everyone. My name is Ayaka Kato. I'm a fourth year in the Faculty of Tourism at, at Sapporo International University. I'll start my presentation now. My university is in Sapporo, and we all belong to the FileMaker Club. We call it FLT. FLT is an abbreviation of FileMaker with lunchtime. The name means our activity is every Thursday during lunch break. Last year in April, we founded it with five of us who came to the United States at this time. 
I will present today. My favorite food is shabu shabu. It is Japanese boiled beef. My hobby is traveling. This picture was taken at Tokyo Disneyland. I am excited to be here today. My session contents are shown on the slide. At the class orientation, our advisor introduced the database course as a very worthwhile for students. So we decided to take it. At that time, we were freshmen of university. We didn't know the, we didn't know words such as database at all. At the first class, we were very anxious because we didn't know Mr. Arga, whose class we had never taken. But he said we would make an application to be used on our smartphones. That made us so nervous because we are not science students. We thought it must be a joke. We had used Windows software, such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but only just for homework. And also, it was our first time to use a Mac. We didn't even know the word FileMaker. That's why we thought it was impossible for making an application. In the class, we treat the whole university as a sightseeing spot. The purpose is making campus guide application. Since we were learning about tourism, so we wanted to use this knowledge in the class in the database class. At first, we didn't understand at all. But our teacher patiently helped us until we were able to understand. Our understanding gradually increased as each class pro proceeded. At last, we put the custom in our smartphone and so it worked. We still remember this first impression still now. We were so surprised and very excited that our app worked as we expected. At the final class, all students made a presentation using their original apps. We made our own app based on the same theme, but the final product were filled with personality and everyone's ideas. All products seemed very easy to use. At the end of course, we wanted to continue what we were doing and we wanted to do something other than a regular class. So we decided to find a club using FileMaker for making applications, that is FLT. At that time, we had fun with FileMaker. The first thing we did in the club was to improve the campus guide that we had made in the class. We got more advanced knowledge little by little. We started to use complicated script steps, such as card window, layout switching, button setting, and so on. Our campus guide is being updated by the new club members. Now, I will introduce our original campus guide app. It has three main features. The first one is slide control. We used slide control to put more information into a small screen. For example, 
we put links to connect, connect to the university's website, includes course comments and notes. The second feature is the exclusion of script, which jumps to the related record. This is GTRR, you probably know. By using this, we can easily find course. We can easily kind <laughs> We can easily find course taught by any teachers. The third one is favorite button, which is my best feature. By this button, we are able to save the information we want to study. We held camps during summer and winter vacation to brush up our skills. We shared ideas all day and discussed how to improve layout design. In order to make it a better app, we gathered opinions on items such as color, layout balance, and button placement. This activity helped us become good friends and made everyone feel as if they belonged to the group. During last year's database course, we worked as assistant teachers of Mr. Alga. The class students started with the same feelings as us. They said it was difficult, but they gained new knowledge as class progressed. We felt they enjoyed the database class the same as we did. Through being assistant teachers, we were able to find the potential for using FileMaker. As assistant teachers, we also supported the FileMaker campus program for high school students. We were so surprised at their quick understanding and good concentration. Last autumn, we had the opportunity for our presentation at the FileMaker Conference 2017 in Japan. More than 100 people gathered to attend our presentation. Many people seemed to be interested in what we were doing at the university. By getting a lot of applause after our presentation, we were full of gratitude. We took a picture with President Bill Epling. That was our great memory. After the conference, we began making a new app based on photo spots in Sapporo. We named it SIView. The name SIView is from the Sapporo International University, SIU, and the view of scenery. The information is divided into, into three parts. Those are region, genre, and shop name. Th through region, you can search stores and areas you want to visit. In addition, you can search places through genre. You can use a favorite button to register the place and see spots in the list. This school year, two new members joined us. They are very serious and active women. Of course, of course men are welcome too. We would like to continue club activities full of energy and smiles at all times. Now, we are making new app. It manages to do money and belongings. We plan to release it by the end of next autumn. In Japan, we are doing club activities during job hunting the same as regular, regular students. 
Many companies have shown strong interest in interviews about our activities club, FLT. They were surprised that university women like us are making smartphone applications with Macs. We feel this class attendance and club activities are big advantages over other students. We feel that we have learned a lot of things through this FileMaker campus program. Now, we overcame our negative feelings to a, com to a computer. Moreover, we are able to find adjusting points at the information system around us. We want to change it by using FileMaker. Before taking this class or joining the Club FLT, we thought buying software is natural or standard. But the above experience, we changed our minds and become to think it is better to make an app by ourselves. Almost one year ago, when Mr. Alga asked us whether we wanted to apply for coming DEF CON, we, th we thought it definitely imp impossible. But fortunately, we were selected to present at this place. So we feel like a dream still now. We hope many students would participate in this kind of program and learn so many things. We hope many young people will be interested in using database, especially FileMaker. Our university life has changed completely after meeting FileMaker. At the end of our presentation, I would say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, FileMaker. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Now, like, I've got to say, these five girls have been amazing to spend time with. Um, for many of them, it's their first time outside of Japan. And um, it's just been a pleasure to see how they've been networking in this conference. Um, you know what, like in, in rather a glib way, people have described the FileMaker community in years gone by as male, pale, stale, right? This is changing. The community is becoming more and more diverse. It's incredibly exciting for all of us. Um, if you guys would like to be a part of this and part of seeing FileMaker being put into the hands of more and more people, um, then please get in touch, please ask your questions. Um, and on that note, if you do have any questions, now is the time to ask them. Thanks so much for listening. Cheers. Um, <clears throat> I generally start with a lot of my coworkers. They're not children, but they act like it sometimes. <laughs> but I start from a spreadsheet, uh, Excel sort of place to explain FileMaker. How do you guys start? <clears throat> with maybe somebody who's younger than has ever used a spreadsheet or yeah, even, like, made the, a to-do list. Because right? this is the thing, the kids that were like designing the comic book solution, they didn't have the, you know, the usual FileMaker 0 to 60 view of, they didn't have that spreadsheet already. Um, we actually just gave them the app and um, we used the Custom App Academy online, um, the first kind of four or five um, parts of that. And we explained three things, the notion of a layout, the notion of um, script actions attached to a button, and then the notion of tables. Um, so yeah, they, they just kind of got it. And I think that this is part of, again, what happens when actually technology is just all around you from, from day dot. So yeah, we didn't start with FileMaker. How, how about you, Hiroyuki? Did you did you guys start with Excel? At first, we um, using the Excel for uh, um, managing data, and then to 
uh, convert to FileMaker and show the data in the FileMaker. These tears of joy, I think so. <laughs> does yeah. anyone does anyone else have any other questions? No. Well, okay. thanks again to you guys, and um, hopefully we'll see you soon. Cheers, guys. Enjoy DevCon. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs>